First Sand in the Field, Real Issues, Real Solutions is brought to you by Newport First Sand Jamaica Limited, the first on the land. Time now for First Sand in the Field, Real Issues, Real Solutions. And this morning we're talking sweet potato production and productivity. Joining us, Sajay Jones, agronomist for Zone 3. Sajay, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine, thank you. Good to have you on with us. It is so I- interesting that we're talking sweet potatoes this morning. Jimmy from Port St. Lucie just sent me pictures of his sweet potato harvest. And Jimmy, they're looking good. Yes, so, Sajay, perhaps we can share some additional information with Jimmy this morning that can help him to continue to grow some good sweet potatoes over there in the United States. But how important is it, even for us, to be having a conversation about sweet potato production in Jamaica? I think just about every day, uh, people across the, the length and breadth of the island are using sweet potato for one reason or another. Is, is that so? Yes, that is, that is very much so. Sweet potato, as with many of our crops, it is very important for us to be growing it. The basic source, the basic food source or supply for any economy is agriculture. If the demand for food production is not met in any country, it affects the rate of growth of that country. Mm-hmm. Sweet potato contributes to the national income of Jamaica. Right? So the majority of advanced countries are able to rise as a result of contributions made by the agricultural sector. They help them to invest in other sectors and aid in their development. Now with that said, according to Stati, Jamaica exports over 1.2 million kilograms of sweet potato in 2016. But this only represented a mere 0.7% of the world export of sweet potato, mm-hmm. ranking Jamaica around 20th. This means that Jamaica occupies less than 1% of the global market space, which means we have a lot of room where we can improve on this market potential. Well, let me ask you, Sajay, the fact that we are exporting that small amount of sweet potatoes, does that speak to how much we are actually using sweet potatoes here at home, the, the volume that we have in terms of local consumption? Well, it speaks twofold, and I, glad, I am glad you raised that point. We here in Jamaica consume a lot of sweet potatoes, so we have both a local market and an international market mm-hmm. for sweet potatoes. So the production of sweet potatoes is welcomed in Jamaica. Excellent. I, I, I want to touch on the issues associated with sweet potato production because not every farmer is going to get it right. And this, this is the reason we have these kinds of conversations. I remember a couple of years back, I was getting some sweet potatoes that were just not good at all. They were wormy. They didn't taste good. And so I think we need to touch on some of the issues associated with sweet potato production. I want you to just run through them for us, Sajay. Then we'll break them down even further. Okay. Well, we have a few issues um, affecting sweet potato. They are, one, the inadequate land preparation. Two, an absence of a complete and balanced nutrient management program. Three, a pest and disease management and four, crop establishment, five, unfavorable soil and water pH. Now let's get into them a bit. As regards to your land preparation, whenever we talk about land preparation, we want to always think about your drainage type and placement. Because based on where you have your land, drainage will play a vital role. If your land is next to an area, hilly terrain, you want to have head drains to funnel the water away from your crop is of the vital importance. You don't want to plant the crop and then have the waters running through and washing it away. Another important aspect when it comes to any crop production and even uh, more so sweet potato production is the tilt of your soil, meaning the texture of your soil. You want to have your soil well tilted and fine. Why you may ask, sweet potatoes have the potential to grow up to 12 inches deep in your soil. So you want to have your soil tilt fine and well refined so that the sweet potato tubers can grow deep and expand during the tuberization process to have good, beautiful fruit. In addition to that, you want to control your weeds as these will 
tap into your nutrients applied. These have the potential to take up to 60% of the nutrients that you have applied to the soil. We leave in little to the crop to work with, right? The absence of a balanced and complete nutrient management. Now, we here at Newport first and are always um, hinting towards nutrient management. The law of the minimum can answer that question mm. as to why. Now, this simply states that the plant is limited by the nutrient that is available in its least quantity where all others are present. Another way of looking at this is a chain is as strong as its weakest link. So if you supply every nutrient and leave out one, then you still won't reach a full yield. Another thing that we can look at to, to further emphasize this is the four R's of nutrient management. These are your right source, your right rate, your right place, and your right time. Now let's take a look at the right source. Mm -hmm. As many persons may not know this about sweet potatoes, but sweet potatoes feed in a one to four ratio, right? Now what this means is that for every part of nitrogen applied to your soil, you will need four parts of potassium. So this simply means that you will need the right source of fertilizer when it comes to your sweet potato production. It's not just pick a blend and go ahead and use it. No, you will need a blend that will provide you with one part of nitrogen and four parts of potassium. That's you, that when you are doing your production, that is. Right? If you supply too much nitrogen, then what you will have is a beautiful field with little to no yield. Right? Another thing that you will need to pay attention to is your foliar supplement. A lot of our sweet potato that is produced in Jamaica is produced on land that are rain fed. Right? Now what this will mean is that during periods of stress, periods of drought, you will have the crop going into decline. And you don't want that because once the crop goes into stress, you begin to lose yield. What you want to do is you want to supply your nutrients by foliar means. To, 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 to bridge that gap until you are able to get some rainfall to free up those nutrients in the soil. Right. We take a look at, yeah? No, man, go ahead. We can take a look at the pest and disease management, right? IPM. We always want to encourage farmers to use the IPM system, which is a synergistic combination of different approaches to control the pest and disease. We can consider cultural your mechanical, or your physical, biological, and chemical approaches. You must use all of these together whenever you're controlling pest and disease on your farm. You can take a look at a specific um, pest and disease. For example, your sweet potato weevil, right? Your sweet potato weevil is easily one of the most devastating um, potato pot, um, pests that affects the potato. I heard the hint even yes, earlier I've, on that yes. your planted some sweet potato and had some problems with it. Mm. What, what, well, I almost, I, I, yes. And that sweet potato weevil, as I understand it, is what accounts for the boring that we will see in the in the sweet potato sometimes when you get it, and that very bad taste. Yes, yes. It, it, it damages the fruit and makes it unmarketable. So a lot of the times you plant a sweet potato and won't be able to make as much money from it as you should. And the sweet potato weevil is why. Mm -hmm. The study of the life cycle of this pest can go a far way in controlling it. The type of in mind you can employ the use of pheromone traps to monitor the pest population and also bring some control to it. Another important pest is your aphids. Now it is important, it's a white flies. Now it is important to note that the white flies won't have um, a very large impact as it regards to the visual damage of the plants as it would in many other crops. But what it will do, it will cause catastrophic impact on the productivity of sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. And these are vectors for the sweet potato weevil virus for the sweet potato virus, sorry. The virus will enter the plant system and replicate. Obstructing the nutrient pathways this will cause significant less nutrients to reach the tubers, thus affecting the size and quality of your sweet potatoes. Another thing that you want to look at is your crop establishment. 
selection and transportation of your material. Now farmers listen closely. This is where most of your problems start from. Mm -hmm. Planting materials, whenever you're taking them from a foreign field, a field that is not yours, you should always ensure that the planting material looks healthy and disease free. Now, even if it looks healthy and disease free, you should still go ahead and treat them at the site of procurement. Where should you treat them? At the site of procurement. Wherever you get them from, mm -hmm. you need to treat them right there. On Do the not spot. Take them on the spot. Don't take them an inch, a yard, or a mile from it. Treat them right there. You should use a pesticide dip to treat them right at the spot. You don't want to take any foreign test or disease to your farming location. Right? Another thing that you want to look at always is pH. pH, you can think of pH as the key that unlocks the door to your success. Whether it be water or soil pH, you need to pay attention to your pH, right? Water pH will affect the efficacy of your pesticides. Meaning that if you use your pesticides with improper pH, they will break down they will become unusable, right? Any pH above 7 going up to 7.5 is devastating to your active ingredients. And it is important to know that we have done tests across the island and we can tell you pointedly that the average pH of the water in Jamaica is 8. Mm. And your pH level should be between 5.5 and 6.5 unless otherwise stated by the manufacturer. Okay. So we can see that we are way outside yes. of the range that we should that's be. A, that's a big challenge. That presents a big challenge. Yes, it is a, a large challenge in Jamaica. Of course, very importantly, Another, you have to tell us how it is that you correct that. Yes, of course. Now, when it comes to water pH, we are at Newport first and understand the importance of it and see what it is doing to our farmers. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and we brought in pH meters and citric acid in order to stem, in order to fix this problem for our farmers. So I recommend that you get yourself a pH meter and some citric acid. And what you will do, you will test the pH of your water each time you're going to use it and you can use the citric acid to amend the pH, mm -hmm. bring it within the range that is acceptable for the application of your pesticides. Mm -hmm. Another pH of importance is your soil pH. Now, what the soil pH will do, it will determine whether or not you are able to access the nutrients that are within the soil and the nutrients that you apply to the soil. Let's just put it into perspective. Your soil pH, again, should be between 5.5 and 6.5. Now, if your pH falls outside of this window, going into the alkaline 30 above 7, then what will happen is that then what will happen is that the micronutrient uptake will be inhibited and the reverse obtains where if it is below 5.5 then the macronutrients uptake will be inhibited. Now again we went out and we got some soil amino to use to bring the soil within the range. So if it is alkaline above seven we recommend that you use the sulfur cell to bring it down and if it is acid below 5.5 we recommend that you use the calcium first and to raise the ph of your soil all right we're, we're on the break so let me just clear that but i should also let you know that we're not getting mr richie we have been trying <laughs> just about from the start of the show until this point in time not getting him on so gavin richie if you're listening Please answer your phone. Let's take that break. Miss Betty, early blight, take over my tomato. I will be full of powder and mildew. What am I going to do? Clear way. Oh, you are telling me if it's clear way. What do you think me are your friend? <laughs> No mask, Kelso. May I tell you if you use Clearway from Newport First and Jamaica? It is a conduct and systemic fungicide with protective and curative actions against a wide range of fungal diseases such as anthrax nose and early blight in tomato, purple blotch in onion, late blight in potato, leaf spot in peanut, powdery mildew in pepper, and much more. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Betty. You're really my friend. Me am coming Newport First and Rep right now. Can't forget that name there. Clearway. Clearway. Farmers, get your supply today. Another premium product from Newport for San Jamaica Limited. We 
are inside the feature first and in the field real issues real solutions and this morning we have with us Sajay Jones who is agronomist for zone 3 we should have been having Gavel Richie but we're not getting him at all uh, we're talking sweet potato production and productivity this morning we have already heard from Sajay that issues such as inadequate land preparation, the absence of a complete and balanced nutrient management program, pest and disease management, crop establishment, and unfavorable soil and water pH are some of the issues that farmers will likely grapple with in order to be able to get to a good sweet potato crop. They have to deal with those issues he is uh, pointing out and uh, Sajay I do have a question here from Tio Kingston who is asking is the pH requirement the same for all crops yes yes the pH requirement is the same for all crops what the pH really does you know, it speaks to the availability of the nutrients within the soil so the scale as I said before um, it ranges from 0 to 14, right? 7 being neutral. Now, crops require a slightly, pH, a slightly acidic pH in order to access the nutrients. Between 5.5 and 6.5 is that sweet spot where the nutrients, macronutrients and micronutrients, are available to the crop for absorption. But some crops, of course, will grow best under different uh, the, the different pH levels, which I think perhaps is what Tio Kingston is trying to get at. So you might have, a, and I can't think of the crops because I'm not the agronomist. So but, pineapple is a crop right. that can survive um, on, a, on a more acidic um, soil pH than there other we go. crops. But as it speaks to a general guide as to us, crop nutrition, our crop will be able to, to, to survive well under 5.5 to 6.5. Right, so within that range of 5.5 to 6.5 is what you are recommending that you should have for the crops? Yes, All right. yes, definitely. There we go. All right, so we weren't able to get Mr. Ritchie, but can you just th tell us a little bit about the particular issues that he had been having and what the recommendations were for him? Yes, yes, of course. Now, when we first met Mr. Ritchie, he was um, doing sweet potato production already. And his concern was that he was not getting the yields that he thought he should get. So upon conversation, we recommended that he got a soil test. Now, upon getting this soil test, we created a specialized blend for him. And the results that he got was tremendous. He doubled his production of sweet potato by just taking a soil test and administering a correct blend for his sweet potatoes, which incorporated the nutrients in the right ratio, right? Now, to put this into perspective, he was getting around um, 20,000 pounds of sweet potato per acre. Mm -hmm. Now, upon implementing the precise nutrient management system on his farm, he got upwards of 40,000 pounds per acre. Now, what he did was utilize the program in its fullest. So he used the solar supplements, he used the nutrients, and with that he was able to double his production and move from production to productivity, which are two different things. Oh yes, because you can produce, but you're not being productive. So you, yes. you, you have some crops in the ground and you can say, oh, of course I've produced, but have you made yes. the best use of uh, the plot of land that you have and got, gotten the most crops that you can get out of that plot of land? That's what yes, pro productivity yes. is all about. Yes, that is that is so true. That is so true, and that is what we want to move Jamaica from, mm -hmm. and a, a, a mindset of production and into a mindset of productivity. And that is what we are here for. That is what we are here for. We welcome anyone to approach us, and we will guide you into becoming productive and move away from production. Before, before I, I move to the solutions that you have overall, let me just greet Denton Alvaranga, who is the sales manager for Newport First and Jamaica Limited. And Denton is standing by to give us a, 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 make a very special announcement. Good morning, Denton. How you do? Good morning, Althea. Good morning to our farmers. I'm doing very good. The month of May is always a very good month. All right. So that is a hint. 
as to what is to come. So let us just hold on a little bit and then we take we get that announcement from you. But let me just finish up some information here that I know Sajay has to share with us. All right, so, Sajay, so we've gone through the, the, the issues and the challenges. You have spoken specifically about Gavin Ritchie and the, the challenges that he had. But overall, what are some of the solutions that you have on offer for sweet potato farmers? Well, as was mentioned before, we have pest and disease concerns that need to be addressed. And what we recommend is for the sweet potato weevil that you use first strike and spectra. Why? The spectra will have original properties, meaning that it will be able to attack the eggs before they turn into larva. And at the larva stage is where you have the, the damage occurring. So if you can control it from there, you will be okay. The first strike can be used to control the larva. So you won't be able to have those larvae wreaking any havoc. Now, many persons may have not known that sweet potato virus are causing so much problem in the sweet potato production. Now, we here at Newport First and understand this and have brought in STAR, which is a viricide. Now, what this will do, it will encapsulate and make the virus dormant. Thus, it won't obstruct those pathways for the nutrient movement anymore. And you'll be able to get that food, that tuberization occurring to get that yield that you so desire and deserve. As regards to nutrient management, we offer soil testing, as I mentioned before, and we can develop a blend for you. Outside of soil testing, we have developed a blend that will give you the ratio of 1 to 4 that is necessary for sweet potato production. It's the A2132. In addition, we also have the booster line that can be used to start the crop. So we recommend that you start the crop using the start booster, which is a 15% nitrogen, 15% phosphorus, 15% potassium, sulfur, magnesium, zinc, boron, and iron blend. And then at about a month, you use the A2132 for the application to your sweet potato. We also have the Maniflex line of foliar supplements. So we recommend that you use on your sweet potato, the Maniflex of veg, which is a cocktail of micronutrients, the Maniflex plant starch, and the Maniflex potassium. Right? For the crop establishment, it was said before that you should treat the sweet potato slips when and where. You should treat them when you get them at the site that you're getting them from. And for this, you can create a mix or a cocktail using the clearway, the spectra, and the plant start. Now, why should you use these three things in your cocktail? The clearway is a contact and systemic fungicide. Now, what this will do, it will take care of any fungal problems that are on the slips. The spectra, as I said before, will have oversidal properties. It can take care of all those eggs, all those insects that are on the plant at the site. The plant start is, is a foliar supplement that will be able to um, relieve the plant of any stress that is on it. It has a high phosphorus level, so it will help the plant in early establishment. So using these on your plant, on your slips, before moving them from the site of procurement, is an excellent way of ensuring a good crop establishment. Now what you want to do, you want to cocktail these. The clear we can be used at one teaspoon per gallon of water, the same for the, the spectra. And the plant the plant star can be used at 30 ml or two tablespoons per gallon of water. Now what you will do you will dip the slips into this and keep them there for a few minutes, remove them and allow it to dry in a cool um a cool place. Then you can transport them to your farm location and plant them. As regards to the pH, we already hinted as towards the citric acid and the pH meter for the amendment of your water pH. And for the soil pH, we recommend the soil first hand and the calcium first hand for use in amending your soil pH. So many ways to, to, to fix challenges and I'm very happy that you have broken them down. You have helped us to better understand how each of those issues that you have raised this morning, you have a solution for it. And what the farmer needs to do is to follow the prescription that you have set for him or her so that they can 
correct those issues and challenges that they're having with growing their sweet potatoes so that as consumers, we can benefit, we can get the best produce. And of course, Benton Alvaranga, his special announcement, and we'll round out with the information from you, Sir Jay, in terms of any training activities that you might have coming up. All right, so we're rounding out first hand in the field real issues, real solutions. And this morning we're focused on sweet potato production and productivity. And of course, Jay Jones would have guided us masterfully through the information, inadequate land preparation, absence of a complete and balanced nutrient management program, pest and disease management, crop establishment, and unfavorable soil and water pH are, the, some, of the, are the, some of the issues associated with seed potato production. But they have solutions. As a technical unit at Newport First Sand, they have solutions, a range of products. Sajay spoke about those that can help you in terms of pests and disease management, nutrient management, and crop establishment. But we also have with us Denton Alvaranga, who is uh, the sales manager for Newport First Sand Jamaica Limited. And Denton has a special announcement. He hinted at it earlier on by saying the month of May is special. Right, Denton? Yes, that's, uh, that's true, that's true. Uh, uh, yes. All right, no time to reveal your full hand. Well, let me say that Newport First and Jamaica Limited continues to demonstrate how consistent it is. And when I speak of consistency, I'm consistent with our policy of adjusting prices either downward or upward whenever such fluctuations occur in the world market. And this morning, in, in, in keeping with that commitment, effective Wednesday, that tomorrow, May 3, that the 3rd of May, Newport First and is happy to announce that we'll be making a price reduction across all our granular fertilizer category. Wow. A reduction of up to 22%. What are you saying, Denton? Up to 22%, yes, it's true, in some fertilizer blends and... This includes, for, for, for when I speak of granular fertilizers, that speak of the, the majority of the fertilizers that we use across the agricultural sector. So this is significant and we are happy, we are delighted to be able to share this savings with our customers right across Jamaica, with all our stakeholders, all of the various stakeholders across the agricultural um, value chain. So we are delighted as a team at Newport First and to be able to offer this relief and, and share I'm, the savings with our farmers. Listen to me. I, now that I've taken my job up from off of my desk, uh, how were you able all to manage that 22%? That's a massive reduction in price. Yes, that's massive. And the thing with us, Althea, is that we have demonstrated how consistent we are. We remember as global conditions were, were, were very difficult, mm -hmm. the prices went up and we had to respond accordingly. And as the conditions soften in the global space, we, we chose not to keep those savings to ourselves, mm -hmm. like many in some, in some sectors or industries seek to do. But I know that it is sometimes strange in our marketplace to see prices going down because we, we usually see prices go up and go up quickly. But since last year, we, we would have implemented over three price reductions. And this is just demonstrating how consistent we are with our policies, our commitment. And as we, as we say in Jamaica, it's important to put your, your, your money where your mouth is. Mm -hmm. So we are, we, we are consistent in voice and also in, in our actions. And we want to share, we're delighted to share this savings with our customers. And let me use the opportunity to, April was celebrated as, as Farmers Month. Let me use this platform to, to say thank you to all our farmers, all our stakeholders, for ensuring that Newport First and remains the first choice. We know you, might have, you may have choices, but you have chosen to, to make Newport First and your primary, your first choice for quality and premium fertilizers. We want to stay on behalf of Team Newport First Hand. Thank you. All right. A, a very powerful statement there. And I'm going to come back to you, Denton, before we leave, because you need to give me that number again, that jaw-dropping 
price reduction that you have just announced. Sajay, I don't know if we can focus on anything else after that new piece of news from Denton, but you do have some training exercises coming up. So just give us that information before I go back to Denton. Well, as you rightly said, it is hard for me to compete with <laughs> such wonderful news. Yes. <laughs> but what I can say to our farmers is now is the time to move into production and lead it towards productivity. And to do so, you can log in this and every Wednesday for a Zoom training session. We will speak about in more detail the intricacies of bearing crop production. Now, for tomorrow's session, we'll have sweet potato production and productivity as we dive deeper into this um, amazing crop. And with the price reduction being a granular blend, and see potato production taking place and mostly rain-fed areas that rely on granular blends. Hint, hint, it is time to plant some sweet potatoes. <laughs> of course, there, there are other marketing activities that are coming up as well. The St. James Horticultural Society Orchid Show, Montego River Gardens, Portobello, St. James. That's this Saturday, May 6th. And I hear as well, and perhaps I can ask Denton to comment on this, that Newport First San Jamaica will be participating in the H&L Agro Farm and Garden Market. Denton. Yes, that's true. That's true. H&L is, is also one of our key partners. They distribute a wide range of our products. And of course, we have accepted the invitation to, to participate, to, to, to collaborate with h and in this marketing venture. So yes, you can, all our customers, you can come out and you can expect to see our agronomist, our technical sales consultant. I will be there as well. So you can, we invite you to come out and, and share the experience. Wonderful. Uh, Sajay, outside of uh, the, the Zoom training, how do people get additional information perhaps about other training exercises that you have, and generally, how do they reach out to the team at Newport First End? Well, you can reach out to us on our social media platform. So you can just go on the social media website, our team Newport First End, and reach out to us there. You can call us by our numbers, by our, by our numbers that are posted online, and you can simply walk into any of our, to walk into